Welcome everyone to our overview and admissions webinar. So today we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to go through your path to becoming a top SCM professional, a little bit about the MIT experience, uh, your destination, where are you going to go, and then what's next in far, as far as next steps. So let's dive into the program overview. I like to start with the MIT SCM value proposition. So our value proposition is to develop world-class global leaders in supply chain management with an innovative MIT educational model. And you can really see how this kind of works within the MIT values uh, overall. So MIT at a glance, our motto here is mens et manus, which means mind and hand. Uh, MIT loves this idea of experiential learning where you're taking the theories that you're learning in the classroom and applying them into work uh, outside of the classroom. Um, MIT is a place of innovation. Uh, we are cutting edge. We are trying to uh, further the world of research. Um, we are also about values-driven leadership. Uh, so. We believe deeply in the values that we hold and we try to live those values in everything that we do. Uh, MIT is also really focused on purposeful engagement, meaning that we are forming connections within our cohorts, within our student body, and also within the industry and within, uh, with outside experts um, to kind of bridge that gap between academia and industry. So you can see how our, uh, our value proposition is developing those world-class global leaders uh, within our innovative MIT educational model kind of matches with the mens et manus and the values-driven leadership that's so important to our institution here. Why would you consider the MIT Supply Chain Management Master's Program? There's a few key factors to think through. Number one, it's only 10 months or five months if you do the blended option uh, away from work. So it's a quick turnaround um, to go from uh, your career to your master's degree and back to your career. We have comparable salary outcomes to top MBA programs. Uh, so after you leave our program, you will be competitive with other graduates of, an, of a two-year program. The SCMR or the SCM residential option uh, provides OPT and STEM certified up to three years of US work authorization for international students. So if you're looking to work in the US, the SCMR option is a great one. This is a cohort experience. Um, we put together 40 students in the residential class and 40 students in the blended class uh, to create a really cohesive, tight knit group that will become your uh, network as you go through the program and as you graduate. We also provide a study trek. Uh, this is a bonding experience for the cohort where you get to travel to Panama, the Bay Area, or Seattle, uh, depending on the year. A little bit about the Center for Transportation and Logistics. So our SCM program uh, sits within our Center for Transportation and Logistics, of which the three pillows are really important. Uh, so the research that's being done in the Center for Transportation and Logistics kind of dovetails into what the SCM students are learning in the classroom. Um, we also have an outreach uh, center in the Center for Transportation and for Logistics that uh, brings together industry experts to our SCM students. And then the education that you're receiving through SCM is deeply connected to our Center for Transportation and Logistics because you're working with those researchers and industry experts on those challenging problems. We are a number one ranked uh, SCM master's program uh, as seen here, uh, not to toot our own horn, but to toot our own horn just a little bit. We're really proud uh, to be ranked number one uh, this year and for the past few years as well. These are some of the research labs, initiatives, and projects that you would have access to as a member of our SCM cohort. Um, some, just a few of these labs, of which uh, Professor Jesus Sainz is the digital is the director of the Digital Supply Chain Transformation Lab. We also have uh, supply chain innovation, supply chain resilience, um, sustainable supply chains, um, as well as the Cave Lab uh, and Megacity Logistics Lab that are doing some really interesting research. As I mentioned briefly, there are two different ways that you can get a master's of um, applied science in supply chain management here at MIT. The first path is the residential path. 
that includes 10 months on campus. It's really designed for early career supply chain professionals. Um, so if you've graduated, you've been working for a couple of years, and you're looking to kind of dive deep into supply chain and get an advanced specialized degree, this is where the residential program would come in well for you. Um, we have customized career development and recruiting opportunities available for our residential students. And as I mentioned, you are eligible for OPT and STEM work authorization if you are an international student. The blended option is developed more uh, for uh, students who are holding a MicroMasters credential and uh, have a little bit more years of work experience. So, um, this this option is a is the same degree as the residential option. However, it's completed in just five months on campus. So you do your MicroMasters credential uh, program um, that usually takes uh, about eighteen months, and then you can uh, apply to the blended program after that. Uh, after you've completed that that um, credential. So you enter campus uh, in January and you graduate in May with the residential cohort. This is really a great option for our students who are more non-traditional that might have more years of work experience or who might have not as deep of uh, an experience in supply chain but are looking to learn more. Just a note, uh, the blended option is not eligible for US work authorization due to the length of time that you're in the US. This is the residential program timeline. Um, you would start uh, in onboarding in May and June uh, and then July. And then by August, you're coming to campus for orientation and starting to prepare analytically. Uh, in the fall term, you have your core classes. You're starting to get some career coaching and opportunities for jobs already. Uh, and then you're starting to work on your capstone project. Uh, in January, that is uh, known as IAP or Independent Activities Period. It's a three-week period where you'll be very busy uh, during, during our three-week conference with all of our scale center partners. Um, these are uh, other supply chain excellence centers throughout the world that send their students to MIT for three weeks for uh, networking and, um, and speakers and, and a conference. Um, so that is January. And then in spring term, you'll continue with your classes. We'll have that study track that I mentioned where we uh, get to travel together, uh, more career coaching, you'll finish your capstone project, and then you will go on into May uh, and graduate. The blended program, uh, they this uh, timeline is a little bit more compressed due to the length of program. So first you would finish your MicroMasters credential and that can take anywhere from 18 months to two years prior to the program. Uh, often students complete their MicroMasters while they're working full time. Then you would apply to the SCM program between December and June. And then uh, in the fall term, uh, as you're continuing to work and plan to come to campus in January, you'll start your capstone work, you'll hone your analytics skills, and you will uh, begin your onboarding process into MIT. The fall is all remote for our blended students, and you're not an official student at MIT. Um, however, uh, there are prerequisites that we would expect you to be working on uh, throughout the fall term. Then you arrive in January and your experience is exactly the same as our residential students in that you have the independent activity period, that three week scale conference, a real chance to connect and network with other supply chain professionals from around the world. And then uh, in the spring, you are a full time MIT student taking classes, um, study track, uh, getting your own career coaching and you're working on your capstone project before you graduate in May uh, with the residential students. A quick overview of our curriculum. Um, so our curriculum, you'll see here that it's a quick program, only three real terms, uh, only two of which are full semesters and then IAP or independent activities period in January is really compressed. Um, so I'm not going to uh, touch on everything on this slide. Uh, you, These slides will be shared so you can read it at your leisure. Um, but I just wanna point out that um, the fall term, this is only for the residential students. Um, at the time that the residential students are taking required classes, the blended students are working uh, independently in parallel on similar uh, classes, just not for credit. Um, I will say that um, one of the best things about our program is the ability to customize your experience. Um, electives are something that our students are really passionate about. And it's a real chance for you to dive deeply into a subject that you care about that might not be present in the core classes. 
Um, so you can see here what our core topics are, uh, logistics systems, database and data analysis, written communication, network design, and then working on your capstone project. Um, this is where you are working in pairs with an industry partner to solve a supply chain challenge for them. Um, so the capstone project scope and methodology would be during the fall. And then in addition, we recommend taking at least one elective. Our residential students are typically taking two to three electives in addition to their core classes at this time. Um, so they need to select subjects from two of the three following tracks, uh, analytics, leadership and management, and strategy. So we recommend at least one elective. So for example, you would take an analytics elective at this time. In um, independent activities period or January, you will have uh, two three unit courses uh, that would be analytical methods and leading global teams. And then you will be continuing work on your capstone and you will do a poster presentation in January. And then in the spring, um, our blended students and our residential students will be working on data science and machine learning, really focusing in on their capstone and then taking additional electives during that time. Um, these, these are an, an example of some of the supply chain management electives that our program offers for our students. Um, and I chose to list these electives because these are the ones that are most popular with our students as you are all interested in supply chain management. Um, so things like humanitarian logistics, uh, e-commerce and omni-channel fulfillment strategies, uh, digital supply chain transformation. Um, and this is just a sampling. Um, there are many, many, many other classes across MIT that you can take. Um, they are, you can take classes at any school at MIT, and um, there is no limit on the number of classes you can take except units. <laughs> you can only take a specific number of units. However, you can take any uh, class that you really want, uh, as long as you are making a good case for how it will um, how it will benefit your education here at MIT. Uh, and taking um, the maximum number of units does not mean you have to pay more, which is really nice. There is also the option to cross-register at Harvard. Some students find that very attractive. Um, so yes, you can take a class at Harvard if it fits within your educational goals. So there are two degrees that we offer. We offer a Master of Applied Science in Supply Chain Management. This requires a capstone project. We also offer a Master's of Engineering in Supply Chain Management, and this requires a master's thesis. There are, um, there's a significant difference between a master's thesis and a capstone project. A master's thesis is really focused more for students that are interested in going into academia and will someday pursue a PhD. Um, so we don't teach research methods. So coming in uh, and going for the master's of engineering, um, you need to have a strong background in research and a strong reasoning towards why you want to go into uh, that specific path. Um, the majority of students that choose that path are interested in moving forward into a PhD role. The majority of our students go through the Masters of Applied Science role. A capstone project is working with an industry partner to uh, solve a challenge. Um, it is not contributing anything new to research, but it is using um, methods that you are learning in class in order to uh, solve a real world challenge. Um, so it's a little bit different than research. A little bit about the MIT experience. So this is kind of a snapshot of what your time at MIT might look like. Uh, it is true, we are in the Northeast, it does get cold. Um, so you can prepare yourself for that. But uh, I really feel like MIT is a very mission driven place and you will find this to be very obvious in all the ways that you interact across MIT. Um, whether that is sitting in class, or joining a club or going on the study track with our students, um, you're going to find that uh, everyone here is extremely engaged, looking to get the most out of the program um, and looking to build that really strong MIT community. These are all our students from last year. Uh, so we went to Panama last year. Uh, all of these photos are from Panama. And then we went to the, uh, the Bay Area as well. Um, and then there are many, many different ways to get involved at MIT in student clubs and activities. Sailing is a huge uh, uh, activity. I actually just heard that our current students, um, I think about half the class are already certified sailors and have been sailing on the Charles very often, which I think is lovely. Um, our students really love to get together and do activities. I've heard that they're going hiking a lot this year. 
Um, these were all of our students from last year. Obviously, they celebrated Chinese New Year. Um, they went ice skating and they hung out with our mascot, Tim the Beaver. So let's talk about where you're going to end up after you graduate from our program. So we already know that you are destined for professional success. Otherwise, you wouldn't be considering the MIT SCM program. Um, so we have dedicated career development staff that will guide you from the moment you accept our offer of admission. Some of you might even have met with them uh, earlier, Justin and Len. Um, and we're interested in learning about you and your aspirations and unique talents. So we want to know who you are when you're at your best. And we promise to give you extensive one-on-one -on -one coaching expert advice, robust resources, and an access to an array of leading employers. And most importantly, I think that this is really key, uh, unparalleled network of loyal alum MIT alumni. Many, many, many of our students connect with uh, alumni in order to get a job uh, after they graduate from the program. Uh, and that is uh, one of the strengths of our program is our, our alumni love to come back. They love to hire our students and they love to continue to build our MIT SCM network. This is just some quick employment outcomes. Um, you can see this is all um, for the residential students, but just uh, to give you a quick idea, 91% of job seeking students accepted an offer within 90 days of graduation. Some of our students are mostly, uh, you know, are, are getting job offers in the fall even. Um, and then we like to see our students go into roles such as supply chain manager, senior forecasting and inventory analysis, uh, technical program manager. Um, our average base salary is relatively high and uh, our our median salary, again, pretty high. Uh, we're, we're very happy to see our alumni working for companies such as Tesla, Amazon, Apple, Accenture, um, and really they're very competitive in the job landscape. So what is next for you specifically, and what next steps do you need to take to join our class of 2026? This is our uh, list of application requirements. So you can see for the residential program only, you must take either SC0X or the GMAT, the GRE. Um, we look for a minimum of 85% on SC0X, but that's not a hard requirement. Um, and then we are expecting, you know, 75 percentile minimum for the GRE or the GMAT uh, in the, the verbal and quantitative sections. Um, that being said, I do want to say that we consider every application holistically. Uh, so if you're above or below those percentiles, please don't stress about that. Um, we want to see your whole application and we consider the whole application, not just your test scores. In the blended program, we are looking at your performance in the MicroMasters, uh, so SC01, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and the CFX exam, uh, your whole credential. And then for both uh, residential and blended, we're looking at your IE, IELTS or TOEFL score, uh, your video statement, your written statement of objectives, your resume, uh, at least two years of work experience is required, um, and two letters of recommendation are required, as well as your undergraduate transcript. A few tips. So first, the video statement. A lot of people are daunted by our video statement. Um, our video statement, uh, we request it to be two minutes long. So this is really your chance to introduce yourself to the admissions committee. Um, get, you know, take the moment to tell us who you are. Um, demonstrate your personality, uh, your authenticity. Think about how you can make yourself stand out and be unique. Um, talk about your, per your personal experience as well as your professional accomplishments. Try to be yourself. Try to avoid reading uh, a script. We can tell when you're reading. <laughs> uh, we just want you to talk to us, to be relaxed uh, and to enjoy yourself. Use your webcam and test, make sure that you can, that you are, are clearly seen and clearly heard. And then practice. Uh, it's, uh, I'm not saying you need to have a memorized script, but if you can practice just uh, a couple of times before you actually record, this will really help us to get a good sense of who you are. For work experience, two years is the minimum requirement, but we find that three to seven years is really ideal for job placement. So if you are two years into your career and you know that this is the right moment for you to apply to the program, by all means, please apply. However, just know that it's a little bit more competitive in the two years of work experience range because we do see uh, many applicants that are late coming in at two years right away. 
So three to seven years, you know, you have a little bit more professional uh, growth. You, maybe you've been promoted once or twice, and you, you, it makes you a little bit more interesting uh, as an applicant to have that many years of work experience because we can see how you are contributing to the supply chain sector and how this degree is really going to take you to the next level. Make sure your resume is set up so that it clearly lays out your experience, highlight your accomplishments, be succinct, but also um, be use data points. Uh, we want to see exactly the impact that you're making uh, in your day-to-day -day work. For your letters of recommendation, um, we recommend choosing one academic and one professional. Um, and try to choose individuals who can really speak to your accomplishments. Um, have them use data in their letters. We are very interested in what exactly has your impact been and how can someone that is recommending you speak to that impact. Um, you only need to do two letters of recommendation. Uh, if you really feel that a third recommendation is going to have additional data to add, please feel free. However, if you're starting to add four or five recommendations, that's maybe not the best way to highlight your accomplishments uh, as two really good letters of recommendation will accomplish the same thing as five mediocre letters of recommendation. So just a note. A little bit about fellowships and funding. I know that this is uh, always a hot topic for our applicants. How do I fund this program? Um, so I will say that the SCM has some departmental fellowships that we uh, are able to give out. Um, such as the Scale Scholars Fellowship. Um, there are, there's the Awesome Fellowship, which is for women identifying folks um, who are working in supply chain. Um, and then the UPS Fellowship, uh, typically one student wins the UPS Fellowship every year. Um, all of our fellowships are considered, except for the Supply Chain Excellence Award, um, all of our fellowships are considered upon application to the program. So uh, we will not be considering any, uh, any funding decisions until we see your application come through. At the time you're notified of your acceptance, um, then you will also be notified if you have been awarded a fellowship or not. Um, so that is kind of the process for us. I highly recommend applying in the earlier rounds um, it, to be considered for our more competitive fellowships. In addition to these fellowships, uh, there are other fellowships available at MIT that our students apply for. Um, Emma might be able to share the link in the chat of uh, our Office of Graduate Education Fellowships where you can look at what other fellowships are available at MIT. The best recommendation I can give to all of you is to please consider carefully what your plan is for funding this program as you're applying. Um, coming in with a plan, it makes it a lot easier um, then, uh, you know, if you plan to get in, then you can plan for funding, right? So uh, it's always easier to think about what's in my bank account now, how am I going to manage this program, and what is my financial plan, instead of getting into the program and then uh, worrying about how you're going to fund it. Our application is live right now. You can go ahead and start your application and apply. Our round one deadline for residential students is coming up on November 1st, and our uh, our blended deadline is coming up in January, uh, January 10th. Um, so we hope to see your applications come start to come through around then. Um, there are, you have two more chances to apply for residential and one more chance for blended as well. We do this um, because we uh, know that some students are very eager to apply um, and we read every application. Uh, we read the number of applications that came in at the end of each round. Um, so there will be maybe four to six weeks uh, after we close the round, then there will be decisions released to the students that applied by the end of that round. We have some upcoming events in case you uh, enjoyed this webinar and want some more. We have some coming up on December 12th, we'll have our career development webinar. On January 16th, we'll do another webinar very similar to this one, uh, more general information. On February 21st, we are having an on-campus preview day um, where we will invite students to campus to experience a day uh, in the life of an uh, MIT SCM student. Um, so we hope to see many of you there at that time. So in closing, if you are a change maker who's ready to take your career to the next level, if you are an eager learner with a passion for supply chain management, and if you're an innovator who thrives in a fast paced environment, and if you're looking for a program that is going to challenge you and bring you personal growth, we really can't wait to read your application. 
Thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. I uh, am very excited to go into the Q&A now and look through and see what we've got for some uh, questions and I will start to answer them. Um, so I see uh, right off the bat, um, some students are, are, are asking about the residential and the blended program at the same time. Um, so you can apply to the residential uh, program and the blended program or you can um, be accepted to one and on a case-by-case -case basis, if you realize that the other program is a better fit for you, we can discuss that. That's not typical. If you get rejected by the residential program, um, will that have any impact on the decision process of the blended program? Probably not. Uh, we consider each uh, program differently. You can apply to both um, and you, um, but I would say that you should really apply to the program that you think is going to be the best fit for you. Is the capstone project proposal still a required application document for the blended program? Good question. Um, we used to apply a capstone um, project proposal. However, we have removed that requirement for the blended uh, program, so you do not need to submit it. If you are a prospective blended applicant and you are looking to do your own capstone project, perhaps with uh, a company that you are working for, uh, that is something that we can discuss uh, upon admission to the program. Um, and you can always bring that proposal to our capstone team uh, after you're accepted. Um, is there any prioritized admission timeline for international students? Good question. Um, I pr prefer international students to apply in the earlier round um, so that um, they can do, have time for visas. Uh, so we know that sometimes the visa process can be a long process. So uh, I like to see international students apply by round two for residential um, and by round one for blended. Um, but we understand it's not always possible. So we, we, we know that sometimes, you know, if you're taking the CFX exam in May, for example, then, um, you know, you won't have time to apply until uh, June, uh, which still gives you ample time to get a visa. Is experience in the supply chain field mandatory while applying for the residential program? Um, so this is a good question. I would say for career pivoters, it's more common for them to go through the blended program because you take the MicroMasters first and that gives you a good solid foundation in supply chain management fundamentals. Um, it is less common to see career pivoters in the residential program. However, there's nothing to stop you from applying. Um, uh, if you have some tangential experience in supply chain management uh, and you really are focused on the residential program, by all means, please submit an application. Um, so a question about the capstone and the thesis options. Um, does MIT have topics for the students to choose from? So when you enter into our program, there's an extensive matching process for our, um, our thesis uh, slash capstones. Um, so Thesis options, um, that is a conversation that we need to start early in the process um, that is done separately than our capstone matching process. You need to do a thesis proposal. You need to choose an advisor. Um, you need to speak with myself and uh, Maria, uh, Dr. Jesus Sons, uh, to go through uh, the process for getting a thesis approved. The capstone matching process, um, we have a team member, uh, Aaron, who recruits all of our capstone projects, and then there is a, um, a, a presentation schedule, a matching survey, and then you're assigned a capstone project along with a partner. Um, so there is a, a student choice to that. Uh, you get to um, rank the capstone projects to, according to your preference, and then you are matched um, based on an algorithm uh, and your preferences. So that is uh, the process for that. And you would learn much more about that um, as an accepted student. The video statement um, is for both the blended and the residential student uh, applications. Um, so if you are applying to the program, you will see that as a requirement for both applications. So uh, someone is asking if work experience is a hard criteria for the residential program. Yes. This is a professional program. Uh, we are focused on people who have already begun their careers. And the reason for that is that this is an industry specific program. We are looking for uh, students that have already begun their careers and are looking to really level up and take their career to the next level and deepen their supply chain experience. Um, we uh, will say that some of our students have tangential supply chain experience, meaning that maybe they don't have specific supply chain experience, but they've worked kind of in operations or something like that. 
that is um, required and it is a hard criteria, yes. Um, is there a residence for spouses? This is a great question. So some of our students do come to campus with their families, their spouses, uh, and sometimes their children as well. MIT Graduate Housing does provide um, uh, family housing if you are interested in that. Um, some students um, just come with their spouse and, and there's housing available for you and your spouse on MIT's campus. The majority of the MIT SCM students live on campus. However, there's lots of other options available uh, in the Cambridge uh, and greater Boston area. So some of our students live off campus. I will say that housing uh, at MIT and also in this area is very expensive. Um, so definitely something to plan for uh, as you are considering the program. So are there um, undergrad GPA requirements? No, uh, as long as you have an undergraduate um, degree, that's great. Um, if you, uh, if, for example, we see that you had a lower undergrad GPA, but that you got really high scores in the MicroMasters program, um, that would be a, a plus for us because we can see that you know how to do the work uh, and you know how to succeed in a, in a course format. What is the usual proportion of international students in one class? Um, so I will say this year's residential cohort uh, is about 50% international, 50% U.S. And, and that is a proportion that we're striving for every year. Um, we like to see a 50-50 split. Uh, so um, someone is asking about applications to our scale center schools uh, like um, Loughborough and uh, Zaragoza in Spain. So uh, as I mentioned kind of briefly in the webinar, um, we have partner scale centers. These are supply chain excellence centers uh, all over the world. And um, these are our partners at, in that they're, they are running their own master's in supply chain management uh, programs. However, they uh, do come to MIT in January for that three-week conference, the SCALE conference. Um, you can, when you're applying to the um, SCM program uh, online, you can also choose to apply to our SCALE Center programs as well. Um, so some many um, applicants come in and apply to not just the Center for Transportation Logistics uh, at, here at MIT, but they also apply to um, you know, Zaragoza or Ningbo or uh, Loughborough, um, which is our newest scale center that's uh, accepting applications now. Um, it is a great opportunity if you're looking to have an international uh, degree uh, and spend time outside of the US, uh, or if you are an international student that's looking to get a master's in supply chain management, but not here at MIT, but still affiliated with MIT. Um, so those are really great programs for you to apply for. Um, and it's very easy. You can just click uh, and apply to extra programs uh, and do one application. Um, a question about the SC0X requirement. So SC0X or the GMAT or the GRE. You don't need to do both if you are applying to the residential program. Um, there is not a separate application for scholarships. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the webinar, um, you are considered for scholarships as you uh, by your application to the program. Uh, so we look at every single application, we read every single application, and then uh, at that time you are also considered for all fellowships that are, you are eligible for. This is an interesting question. Um, would it be possible to divide the blended program into two periods? From the somebody currently enrolled in their employer, it can be a bit difficult to be away for five months. This is a great question. Um, the short answer is no. We need you to come to campus for that specific amount of time in order to get a degree from MIT. You have to be on campus and taking classes. Uh, so we really can't divide it up into any um, shorter period of time. However, that's a great opportunity for you to speak with your employer about sponsorship. Um, so we have had some students uh, had have had success, particularly in the blended program, of saying to their employer, hey, um, I've completed this MicroMasters. It's really helping me with my work here. And I think if I spent five months at MIT, I would be able to come back to our company and be better than ever um, and apply these concepts in this way. Um, right now, we're working on putting together some resources for potentially uh, sponsored students to share with their employers about the value that really uh, the blended degree can bring back to uh, your employer. And your employer might be more willing to allow you to come to campus for five months uh, if you promise to return and uh, give them kind of the, the, the knowledge and the skills that you've been developing through MIT. 
Um, definitely something that we can talk more about uh, as you complete the application process uh, and if you're accepted. What should be highlighted in the written statement of objectives? It's a good question. Um, when I'm looking at a statement of objectives, I'm looking for someone who knows what their short-term and long-term goals are, uh, who knows kind of what they're hoping to get out of the program and where they see themselves going. Um, I'm looking for someone to share some of their past accomplishments and what has brought them to this point um, and who can articulate the way that this degree is going to see them through to the next level. Um, so that's what I'm looking for in the written statement of objectives. Good question. Are there students who are continuing their PhD in education uh, or their PhD education in supply chain at MIT? So it is um, possible. We do have some students that um, come and do their PhD at MIT either through the SCM program. Um, these are our, our graduates here at MIT or through uh, one of our scale centers. They sometimes apply to the PhD program at MIT. Um, and then get accepted. So yes, that is um, a possibility. Uh, someone with, I saw on the student blogs that somebody with an MBA degree did the SCMR program. How often does this happen? Uh, more often than you think. Uh, so one thing I, that's nice, I think about um, master's degrees is some students find that having more than one is a benefit to them in their career. Um, so it's not um, uncommon for us to see applicants that have an MBA or that have another master's degree um, coming through uh, and applying for our program. Um, so I would say it happens, it's not uncommon, but it's also not super the norm. So I would say maybe like 10 to 20% come in with uh, some sort of master's degree already. Um, and that's that's okay, that's fairly normal. Um, and we we still consider them uh, as highly qualified applicants for our program, as long as they can make a good case for why they need an additional master's. Um, if someone already has a master's in supply chain management, then I would look a little more closely about why they wanted an additional degree that seems very similar. Uh, a question about taking electives at Sloan School of Management. Yes. Um, most of our students take classes at Sloan School of Management um, in uh, various topics. Um, actually, our building uh, here on campus is connected to Sloan School of Management, so you can go over to Sloan without even walking outside. Um, so it is very typical for our students to take uh, classes at Sloan, um, such as accounting, system dynamics, uh, some of the larger, um, really popular classes. Our students have no trouble um, taking those, and they really enjoy that. Um, we consider ourselves, you know, a School of Engineering degree. We are housed within MIT School of Engineering. Um, however, I think we're a little bit business school adjacent in that um, our students um, are very similar to an MBA student uh, in terms of years of work experience and what kinds of jobs they're going to go for after they graduate. So uh, it is very uh, common for them to take classes at Sloan, uh, and they really enjoy interacting with the students over there. Does MIT provide health insurance options for students and spouse and children? Yes, they do. Um, that is definitely something you can enroll in uh, for you and your family as a graduate student at MIT. OPT is not available for the blended program. Um, the blended program being on campus for only five months means you are not eligible for OPT in the blended program. Um, it's very important that you understand that distinction because uh, we've had students apply to the blended program, get accepted, and then realize they wouldn't get OPT and not come. Um, so the residential program is the only program that offers OPT. Uh, a question about the job market um, that it's very tough right now. Has there been any change in companies looking to recruit from graduates over the past two years? Um, the short answer is yes, we have seen changes in the companies um, looking to recruit graduates. However, um, you are getting a degree from MIT, and I think that helps a lot. No matter what the job market looks like, our students are always competitive on the job market, um, and the majority of our students have no trouble finding a job, and that's been true through even the pandemic uh, and through the economic downturn that we've been experiencing. Um, even right now, uh, we are starting our recruitment season, and I think we have had at least seven different companies interacting with our current cohort already, uh, and that's just this fall. Um, so we're experiencing, things are looking uh, positive in terms of uh, the job market right now. Question about um, reapplicants um, and 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 what to do if you're rejected one year. We are always open to somebody continuing to apply to the program, even if they're rejected one year. The one thing is that we don't offer feedback on applications, um, so we can't tell you why uh, you were not offered a space 
in the program, um, but you are welcome to reapply. Um, one thing that we are implementing this year is there should be in the application a space for you to explain why you're reapplying and what has changed from your previous application. Um, that kind of gives us a little bit of, um, of a way to understand kind of what your, your journey has been uh, in terms of your professional career between applications. Um, so we try to in, look at every application as its own entity. Uh, that is, we're not considering if you've been rejected in past years, if you, you got accepted and you couldn't come for a personal reason, we're not considering any of that. We're only considering your application as it stands right in front of us. Um, so you're welcome to reapply um, in future years. Um, can we talk about the entrepreneurship support? Yes, we can. We can definitely talk about entrepreneurship at MIT. So as I mentioned, um, the MIT is a place that's uh, heavily driven by innovation and by entrepreneurship. And we happen to be in the same building as the Martin Trust Center for Entrepreneurship. Uh, it is two floors down from us. And one of uh, the executive director of that program, Paul Cheek, actually teaches in our program. Um, so you have plenty of time to access the Martin Trust Center. A lot of our students come to MIT with uh, kind of an interest in learning more about entrepreneurship, uh, whether that's through taking a class in the Trust Center or taking a class through Sloan. Um, or just interacting with um, the many, many possible startups and innovation clubs here at MIT. Um, I would say speak with our current students about what they're doing in terms of entrepreneurship uh, and get a good sense of what uh, opportunities they're taking advantage of. Um, I would say maybe like 50% of our students do some sort of on, take a class on entrepreneurship or join a club or do a pitch competition, something like that um, while they're here. So there's plenty of ways to get involved uh, in MIT's innovation ecosystem. A question about transferring credits. Um, am I, if you already took a class at MIT Sloan, could you use that credit to waive for an SCM degree elective course? Uh, no, uh, we don't accept Sloan credits towards, towards the SCM degree. There are different ways that you can waive some of our core requirements. However, they are based primarily upon if you took uh, any of the MicroMasters courses. Um, so a benefit to taking the MicroMasters courses is that you might get to waive some of the SCM um, core requirements if you're in the residential program in the fall. Uh, is there a maximum number of years after which we receive our MicroMasters credential in order to be eligible to apply for the master's? Uh, yes, um, the maximum number of years is uh, three years right now. Um, however, we will consider on a case-by-case -case basis uh, if we can extend that. So if you took the MicroMasters uh, four or five years ago, definitely uh, be in touch with us uh, at scm-admissions at mit.edu, and we can consider that on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, we are not able to waive the GRE for SCM professionals. If you're applying to the residential program, we need to see the SC0X or the GRE or the GMAT. Um, that is just a hard requirement for us. Um, a question about um, the evolving technology and AI landscape and how that's impacting the MIT SCM program. <laughs> All right. Well, AI is such a hot topic right now. Um, it's definitely something that our, our instructors are considering and thinking about as we plan our curriculum uh, and plan our courses. Um, so you take an entire class on um, machine learning. Um, uh, you take many classes that will talk about AI uh, and landscape and how that is shifting the SCM industry. Um, our, our researchers and our instructors are all using, um, are all working in that space uh, in ways that the AI um, is changing the, the work that they do. Um, so it is 100% going to be something that you will be thinking about. Uh, many of our capstones are, are asking about AI and ways that um, it can be utilized for their challenges. Um, so it is integral to the, the SCM program at this time. I'm seeing a lot of questions just generally about the blended program. And I will say um, that the primary 
difference between the blended program and the residential program is in the number of years of work experience. Most of the blended students have a little bit more years of work experience. The amount of time on campus, uh, blended students are on campus for about half the time uh, that a residential student is on campus. And um, the, the prerequisite work. So blended students, um, although they are only on campus for a short period of time, there's a lot more pre-work for the program. And this is primarily because they have to take the MicroMasters. The MicroMasters can take, as I've mentioned, up to 18 months to two years to complete. And it's because our blended students are all working full-time while they're taking the, the courses. So uh, I would say the blended program is much more ideal for someone who is really advancing in their career, really focusing in on supply chain, um, and who is looking to just quickly get a degree at the end of that time and take advantage of five whole months here in Cambridge on MIT's campus. That's the primary difference. Uh, and, and again, the blended program is not eligible for um, OPT or US work authorization. Um, so. My general feeling is that uh, both programs give you the same degree options, either a thesis or a master's of applied science, sorry, a master's of engineering or a master's of applied science. Um, they both have their, their, um, their pros and cons, um, but no matter what, you are getting an MIT degree. Uh, and the, the connections that I've seen forged between the blended students and the residential students are truly unique uh, and really strong. Our students come out of the program um, with 79 other friends that they can call on in the supply chain space. Um, and we are building a global network. Uh, so when they scatter across the world, they still maintain those connections to each other and then to MIT. Um, a, a few questions about scholarships. Uh, again, I understand that that funding the program is, is going to be a primary concern for many of you. Um, so I encourage you to think deeply about what funding opportunities you can get. There is absolutely no rule on uh, if you um, get a, an outside scholarship, you can absolutely apply that towards our degree. Um, if you uh, get funded by your government, uh, some countries provide scholarships for study at MIT, um, you know, you can definitely use that. Um, you are considered for scholarships uh, as as an applicant, you're automatically considered for all scholarships. The UPS scholarship is not just for US students. I saw that question. Um, everybody is considered uh, for it. Um, and I would say that, um, the, again, I think probably 75% of our students receive some form of financial aid, whether that is from the program um, or through uh, outside scholarships, so. I really have enjoyed this time with you all. Thank you so much for your high level of engagement, your insightful questions, um, and everything that you have um, asked uh, today in the webinar. I hope that the information that I shared uh, gave you a little bit of light onto our uh, SCM program, uh, into uh, what we do here at MIT and what being a student here is like. Um, I really enjoyed sharing it all with you and I can't wait to read all of your applications. Um, so thank you so much for joining uh, today uh, and thank you for everything, uh, all of your questions. Um, please reach out to us um, at scm-admissions at mit.edu uh, and this recording will be shared along with the slides. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone.